morning. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this forum. It's my pleasure to begin this uh, session on carbon foot footprinting and emerging economies and international trade by giving a perspective from the World Trade Organization. Other speakers on this panel will exchange their experiences at the product, sector, or country level. I hope my intervention can help understand the trade-related aspects of the initiatives and developments around CFP and labeling schemes. For us, not for you, but for us, the subject is relatively new. Therefore, there is as yet not enough information, in my view, in the trade community to enable WTO countries to assess the potential impact of various initiatives on international trade. There is no meaningful debate at the intergovernmental level to identify the challenges and opportunities for exports, in particular for exports from developing countries. Essentially, what I would like to do in this intervention today is first report briefly on the discussion on carbon labeling and footprint in the WTO. I will then try to highlight the issues that appear to be key for the WTO members in the voluntary standards area in general and in the CFP area. Finally, I will give a brief overview of the WTO's work on standards in the context of the agreement on technical barriers to trade and the work in the Committee on Trade and Environment, because in the WTO, we work with rules and institutions, and I think this is a good opportunity for me to explain the context in which your activities are taking place at the international level. Now, before I go into this, in the terms of the WTO, it may be useful to take a step back on, and consider the term non-tariff measures. As you know, over the past half a century, tariff measures, uh, tariffs have been successfully reduced. They are quite low in developed countries now, almost 2%. Average in uh, developing countries, 6%, with exceptions, peaks, etc. And that's why we have the door around, because if tariffs were so low, we would not have the negotiations on tariffs in the door around. Today, though, I would venture to say that non-tariff measures continue to pose an increasing challenge to the trading system. Standards, technical regulations, and conformity assessment procedures form part of the universe of non-tariff measures. In fact, they form a significant part of non-tariff measures. We'll come back to that later in the context of the climate change measures. Now, unlike tariffs, non-tariff measures are difficult to quantify, and they are non-transparent, and this intangibility makes disciplines on non-tariff barriers, or reducing or eliminating them, difficult and less straightforward in the WTO context. Now, I will say a few words about our work on uh, trade and climate change. In general, you know this better than I do, trade intersects with climate change in a multitude of ways. Also, many of the WTO rules that were not created for climate change issues apply to uh, climate change. Uh, Although there is an important debate outside the WTO on border measures, on renewable energy, etc., in the WTO itself, we have not yet uh, began a formal discussion on the implication of climate change measures for uh, the WTO system, for the multilateral trading system. 
So the Secretariat, hoping to give some analytical basis to this debate, did a study with UNEP. In fact, it was a literature review on different aspects of climate change and, and trade. And this is the, uh, the study that you may uh, wish to download from the WTO website. It looked at various issues, but uh, what is important to our debate and from the WTO perspective, and we wrote that uh, piece, uh, that chapter with another colleague, is the one on national climate change policies and their effect on trade. So we did some work on climate change. It's, it's not fair that we haven't done anything. In addition, the Secretariat took the initiative to organize two events. We said, OK, we are not discussing climate change formally here, but there is a real world out there, and WTO delegates have to be informed of what's going on. So we organized one session on trade and transport, and another one last year, an information session on carbon footprint and labeling schemes. In that session, we had some colleagues from here. For example, we had Maureen from DEFRA, who shared the national experiences and lessons learned in developing a CFP. We also had subsequently, I think they were inspired, delegations of New Zealand and Chile brought their own uh, uh, explanation of their own initiatives. And also we looked at what was happening in the international context, in the, in the harmonization context. We invited ISO and World, Res World Resources Institute to explain their activities in this area that you are very familiar with. Um, this was just a beginning and we hope that we can continue this because from the discussion yesterday, uh, there were some very important developments that I feel personally that uh, we have a role as the Secretariat to inform our delegations. So the debate, I feel that in WTO this important debate needs to continue. And in fact, this information session was welcomed by our delegations and this triggered a debate on carbon footprint labeling. Many people had many things to say about the trade impacts of uh, the, these activities. So what was this debate about? It seemed to me that the debate was mainly about what we had already in the WTO on voluntary standards. The, uh, the central to this debate of technical regulations, um, standards, conformity assessment is the market access impact. We are in a trade organization with trade people. They are concerned what are the uh, implications for market access. This is in fact market access uh, is a standing item in the agenda of the Committee on Trade and Development which was uh, already uh, established in 1994 we look at different aspects of market access issues. Now, this environmental requirements and market access is not only in the WTO among trade people, but when you go to the preparations for Rio Plus 20, they have a theme there, the one of their main theme, in fact, is on green economy. And when you hear the debate, G77, China, developing countries are quite concerned about the uh, green protectionism. They say, okay, transition to green economy, but what are the green protectionism impacts? So this debate seems to me very related to what we've already heard on, on these standards. It is that proliferation of government regulations and private voluntary standards are uh, causing problems. There is lack of international harmonization, and 
There are costs associated with multiple inspection and certification requirements. All these things we have discussed a little bit uh, uh, here in, in a more technical level, but there in a more uh, trade-related level. We've also discussed a similar debate in the WTO for many years, eco-labeling. The questions there, life cycle analysis, and the issue of processes and production methods are, the, are very similar. I should just uh, mention here, it's an important legal issue, and I don't want to belabor on this, uh, but I, I'm pleased to answer questions, is that WTO's view, uh, members' views uh, are divergent on the issue of product processes and production methods. More specifically, on the issue of unincorporated PPMs, processes and production methods, which leave no trace in the final product. And the issue is whether one can discriminate between products based on unincorporated PPMs under the WTO rules. The debate is still open there and very important. It's not only a legal debate. When you look at the climate change issues, carbon footprinting, calculation of emissions, whether a product, one should discriminate against a product because it's coming from a country where the emissions are higher, all these complications are now straight into the WTO debate. For the time being, among academics, but soon maybe in the WTO among, among the experts. So uh, I mentioned proliferation. We have prepared this slide, and I don't need to go over this with you. You are more familiar than I am. But when we sh show this to the WTO members, they are a little bit overwhelmed. They, they, they don't have a good picture of what's happening at the private level, but already at the government level, something is, is coming in uh, quite uh, rapidly. Now, I said that the debate was very similar to uh, standards. Here, uh, when we had uh, the, uh, after the information session, these were the main issues. Transparency, lack of transparency. We need more information. There is lack of international harmonization. We said there are these efforts in the ISO, World Resources Institute, World Business Council, but they are not quite familiar what is the level of the harmonization and is that being used. And then there is the issue of consumers because um, they are trade people defend the consumers saying they may be confused by these multiple schemes. And related to a harmonization issue, we bring in the need for mutual recognition, cooperation. Then, although they are not familiar with methodologies, they say, well, they are complex, they are non-neutral, and uh, in, like in every harmonization issue, they say developing countries have to be there when you are discussing these things, because it's going to affect them. Then, on conformity assessment, the basic issues that this is all going to be very costly when we bring our product and have to test the, uh, the uh, uh, carbon footprint. Then it links it to this whole market access issue that what will happen to our products, especially from countries from uh, distant um, to, to main markets, Latin American countries, Australia, New Zealand, they are already preparing their programs. And this has happened after the fortunate, unfortunate carbon uh, um, uh, food miles debate. Uh, this created some concern and these countries started working on it and they are now developing their own schemes to have their side of the story. And You'll hear this in all venue, Rio Plus 20. We need technology transfer. We need technical assistance. We need capacity building. And I really thought after listening to you yesterday that you need capacity building to understand all that's going on on there. Now, r relevant WTO rules 
We have the agreement on technical barriers to trade in the WTO, and that agreement covers technical regulations, but also standards and conformity assessment procedures. So this is the rules framework that you will be working in. And that agreement has the principles, non-discrimination, avoidance of unnecessary barriers to trade, harmonization, and transparency. With respect to standards, that agreement has a code of good practice attached to that agreement, which applies these principles of non-discrimination, unnecessary avoidance of unnecessary barriers, harmonization and transparency, it obliges governments to ensure that standardizing bodies in their countries abide by these principles. And this code has more than 150 uh, standards organizations who have signed on to it. Okay, then another thing that I would say, because I, I worked uh, all my life on this, is the transparency aspect of these agreements. In the WTO, we are informed about technical regulations, mandatory technical regulations, but we are not informed about voluntary standards. It's logical because there are thousands and thousands of them, therefore we're not informed. So we, uh, there must be other ways of at informing ourselves at least about the important voluntary standards. Uh, in conclusion, I would say that um, there is, and these are not conclusions I wrote after yesterday, before coming here I thought what is all this about and I think that there is need for accurate and useful data and uh, that um, developing countries have to be inclusive and uh, what we say in the whole climate change debate, does WTO apply, doesn't it apply, can you take border measures, can you not take border measures, our answer is the relevance of the rules will very much depend on how the measure or the standard, the carbon footprints are designed and under which conditions you apply so you, they do not impede trade. Do I have half a s second? Now, I want to conclude to this non-trade uh, audience, to the environment audience, that uh, WTO rules provide significant scope for members to adapt environmental protection policies, including sustainability standards. Only that I have gone through very quickly, there are certain disciplines that need to be observed, and these disciplines are common logic, basic, transparency, avoidance of unnecessary barriers to trade, non-discrimination. But again, uh, members have an important degree of flexibility to address their legitimate environmental concerns, but like in everything, you have the rules, but you have the exceptions. But you have to use the exceptions in a way that justifies your environmental objective. Thank you very much for your attention.